This is the Almost Timely Newsletter for the week of January 22nd, 2023. Get this, a new free course. I am mildly excited to announce that we've got a new mini course. Uh, this one's free. Uh, it's called Measurement Strategies for Agencies. You will learn five things that agencies do most wrong when it comes to uh, developing effective measurement strategies for clients and how to fix it. It's just about an hour long total. Uh, it's free and it's for two groups of people. One, people who work at agencies, so you get better at measurement. And two, people who hire agencies, so you know what to ask for in your reports from your agencies. Link in the newsletter, go check it out. What's on my mind this week? AI creation versus refinement. Let's take a minute to talk about originality, AI content marketing. A lot of folks, myself included, have had a lot to say about generative AI, about how AI is ushering in a new age of generated content. In fact, half the news articles um, that I was looking at for when I was putting this newsletter together were all about you know, chat GPT and generative AI. Machines that write almost as well as we do on average, machines that can crank out incredible artwork. Now, here's the thing. That's not what these machines excel at. When it comes to the use of artificial intelligence, in particular large language models like GPT-3 and the chat GPT interface, what these models are good at is transforming inputs. Large language models in general are nothing more than massive statistical probability matrices. There was a great quote from um, the uh, This Week in Machine Learning and AI podcast that goes something like, a word is told by the company it keeps which means that these tools and models understand language only to the extent of the statistical distribution of the words, the phrases, the sentences, and paragraphs that they appear in. That's why they can replicate grammar very well, because grammar is nothing more than statistical distributions of words. They're arrangements of words that have predictable uh, sequences. They're autocomplete right, on steroids. For example, what's the next word in these sentences? Let's see if you pick this up. For all you do, this buds for... Number two, that's not a knife. This is a... Number three, God save the... To get those, most people um, who are familiar with um, Western, particularly U.S. and U.K. culture, could probably um, complete those. For all you do, this buds for you. That's an old advertising tagline. Uh, that's not a knife. This is a knife. A famous quote from the Crocodile Dundee movie. Um, and God save the... Most people actually probably still mentally say, God save the queen, even though uh, Queen Elizabeth passed away in 22, uh, 2022. Now they have to remember to say, God save the king. We know what these various sentences are because in their respective cultures, they're so frequently used that we are accustomed to their word distribution. So uh, we know the statistical probability so well, we, get, we know what comes next, right? Um, again, the last one's changing because the, the queen is no longer with us. What this means is from a generation capacity, these tools can generate text very capably, but that generation is going to be a mathematically an average of the texts of the most commonly surrounding of uh, those words. That's why you give you know, ChatGPT a prompt to generate new stuff. You have to be so incredibly detailed so that the tools can understand the increased sense of probabilities for the words you're asking them to generate. Right? Telling a large language model to write a blog post about social media marketing is going to generate extremely bland, average content, right? Telling it to generate social media content about uh, engagement rates on TikTok with regard to the time of day and gender is going to give you more specific content because the large language model uh, itself can understand based on the additional words you've been providing, right? More of the context, a word is told by the company it keeps. It is drawing from the additional statistical probabilities from the words you've given it. However, what these tools produce is still a statistical average of what they've been trained on. They're not going to produce anything original because they can't, by definition. Certainly, they will produce original orderings of words to some degree, but they can't produce new concepts that aren't in the original model. That's why it's such a big deal in the AI community and the tech community when new versions of models, GPT-3 succeeding GPT-2, for example, uh, GPT-4, which will be out sometime this year, is succeeding GPT-3. These new models, bigger models especially, um, 
when they get released, these models have more original ideas to work with, right? So people get excited about it, can do new things. So some marketers are going to create an avalanche of average. Let's just call it that to be nice. Right? A swamp of sameness as they dramatically accelerate the quantity of their content production, but not the quality. Their use of AI will be to scale quantity in the hopes that that wins them the game and you know, or at least frees up um, some of their time to do other things. And for some companies, that will be a win. And that's okay, right? If your company blog is atrocious now or non-existent now, then yeah, a completely machine-generated blog of mediocrity will be a giant upgrade for your company. It's a huge leap forward from, from you suck to eh, right? <laughs> now, what if you don't want average, right? What if you aspire to more than mediocrity? What role do these tools play? People have a very almost binary perspective on these tools. Either you use them and you're, you're, everything's by, done by machine or you have only truly organic, artisanal, handcrafted, small batch content, right? And as not an either or, right? This is the part that everybody's overlooking. These tools are better at refining than they are creating. And that is the secret. That is the secret we need to unlock their power because these models, their tactical name is really transformers, right? Not, not the 80s story. Um, they are adept at taking inputs and transforming them into outputs. Because of that, they are actually better at refining text than they are creating it. About a third of this article, um, the first third was written with the help of ChatGPT, but it's not what you think. It wasn't, I didn't give it directions to have it write something new. Instead, I gave it my words. It took my words and just cleaned them up. Here's how. On my phone, uh, while I was waiting to pick up my kid from our class, I recorded about five minutes of me talking right, and fed it to Otter, the AI transcription service. And we know, you know, Otter does a capable job of, of transcribing, but all kinds of weirdness creep up in our language as we talk that isn't in our writing. So I took that and fed it to chat GPT and I told it, rewrite this text using correct grammar, spelling, punctuation, and formatting for readability. And it did. It created, you know, the, a, a few paragraphs in this newsletter. But it's my stuff, right? Is what you're reading my words, what, uh, what I'm reading out loud to you, my words? Yes, these are my words, but changed from one medium to the next and cleaned up. My words were transformed by the GPT model, which stands for Generative Free Trained Transformer, into text that's almost exactly what I said originally, minus some things that weren't particularly helpful, you know, ums and ahs and, and stuff like that. That is what these tools excel at. Taking data and transforming it, rearranging it, making it more useful. This preserves our originality as people, our ideas, our language, while improving the quality, and that's what they're best at. Because they're not relying on a gigantic average of all the content that they were trained on, that they've ingested, because they're using our own words and just cleaning up or rephrasing, they perform great, and they keep the spirit of what we're trying to say. They preserve our originality. It's not either use AI or don't, it's use AI to improve you. Right? There was a great story on BuzzFeed about an AI app uh, made for a contractor who's dyslexic, helping refine the inputs into better quality outputs. So, you know, the, the, the person would uh, write out a, a, a sentence that was very terse um, and, and had, you know, spelling errors and stuff like that. And it, it the, using a large language model, it refined it into high quality outputs. We can even use these tools to ingest multiple different voices, multiple different texts to create something useful from the original inputs. My martial arts teacher, Mark Davis, over at the Boston Martial Arts Center has said, it's challenging, you know, particularly as a small business owner, but it's challenging to sometimes create social media copy that resonates with audiences. Well, what better way to write copy or create ads than to use the voice of the customer itself? So I wrote a prop for GPT-3 using real customer reviews that I copied and pasted from the school's um, Google business profile. I said, you will act as a social media manager for martial arts schools. You're proficient at writing social media copy that entices audiences to take classes at martial arts studios. 
you specialize in classical Japanese martial arts schools. Your first task is to examine a series of reviews and use the review copy to write, write promotional content for Instagram based on an aggregation of key positive points from reviews. Each review is separated by this following delimiter. Format your suggestions with this template. Instagram suggested photo, Instagram suggested caption. Some background information. What will happen? The large language model will digest not just my directions, but also the language of what customers had to say in the reviews in school. Real customers, real people, real reviews. And I know this because I actually know the people who wrote left those reviews. So they're, they're not bots. Um, and then generate uh, social media copy based on that. It preserves the main ideas, the original ideas uh, it was provided rather than trying to dip into the well of mediocrity um, to come up with some generic uh, copy. And what was the outcome? Terrific, right? Uh, Instagram suggested photo, a, a photo of the head teacher, Mark Davis, training with a student or teaching a class at the Boston Martial Arts Center. Instagram suggested caption, discover the true meaning of self-defense in martial arts with our head teacher, Mark Davis. With over 10 years of experience and a passion for teaching, Mark's classes are in insightful, engaging, and effective. Now, there's some factual stuff that needs to be cleaned up there. Uh, but this format looks great, right? This is a, this is good Instagram caption stuff built with the voice of the customer, right? This is the secret, right? Yeah, this is the secret because this copy, it's clear, it's specific, it's appealing. This is the power of transformer-based large models. You can have them create something average from scratch, yay, right? Or provide them with the raw materials and they will create refined products. You keep the originality. You keep, keep your spark in the final product. Voice of the customer. I don't know if you should, should tell people this. Voice of the customer is the most important thing now, right? When it comes to large language models and how you can create compelling content that resonates with new customers, use the voice of the customers you already have. They're giving it to you. They are giving it to you in your reviews in your inboxes, in your call centers. They're giving you what they care about, how they speak. And now you can use these large language models to synthesize that all together into new content that will resonate with people because it's using the language that they're going to use too. That is the secret. I'm not even going to put that in the written version of the newsletter. <laughs> Bonus for, for the folks who watched the video. Okay. What else we got going on this week? Uh, in case you missed it, uh, besides the brand, well, it's not brand new, but the Google Analytics 4 course that uh, I just revised, uh, the whole section on GA4 has now been totally redone for all the changes Google made. Uh, but we did a really fun live stream this week on customer lifetime value and how you calculate it. And it really does a great job of illustrating just how complicated actual customer lifetime value calculations are. We've talked like 14 or 15 different pieces of it. It's not as easy as people uh, claim it to be. So check that out. Also had some stuff on uh, chat GPT predictions. Um, I had a video this week I did uh, for the whole warrior nun thing that I talked about in last week's newsletter, uh, like a 20 minute YouTube video. If you're curious, it's up on YouTube. There's a link in the thing. It's called a data driven analysis of the warrior nun franchise and the save warrior nun campaign. A lot of fun, different uses of data. Now, uh, let's take a look at what's new in jobs. We've got a bunch this week. Digital analytics developer at VMware. Digital analytics lead at Fonterra. Digital marketing manager at Crossover. Digital marketing strategist at Uda. Uh, digital, no, director of brand messaging strategy at Giddy. Director of demand generation at Energy Sage. Executive director of marketing technology at Orvian Global. Global marketing manager at Valco Melton. Head of Content and Social Media at the Museum of Ice Cream. Uh, that's got to be a fun one. Um, marketing Director at Blue Chew. Marketing Director at Hussey Seating Company. Product Owner at Charlotte Tilbury. Senior Data Engineer at Red Hat. Senior Manager of Digital Analytics at Jarvis Cole. Senior Consultant at Adsworth. And Senior E-Commerce Advertising Strategist at Whitebox. So lots of good stuff there. Uh, be sure, uh, if you haven't already, grab the Almost Timely 2022 Essays. The ebook is there. Uh, no dit forms to fill out, nothing uh, to do. You can just grab the PDFs or, or the Mobis or the EPUBs and enjoy. In the news this week from other folks, we have planning for 2023 with TikTok. Three, to four, three out of four marketers view the economic downturn as an opportunity to redirect uh, spend away from Twitter. Uh -huh, okay. 
Uh, TikTok EU ban is on the table if the company can't comply with new privacy laws. That's that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of stuff on AI content uh, marketing, technical SEO reports uh, revealing what matters in 2023. We have uh, Azure Open AI and G Chat GPT services now available through, uh, to Microsoft Azure customers. Artists launching legal action to stop AI generative tools from repurposing their works. I also saw in the news uh, Getty uh, is suing um, uh, Stability AI for uh, violating their their copyrights. So that's going to be very interesting. Uh, we have uh, fast text embeddings. We have IBM certified uh, deployment professional stuff, and then. Uh, PodCamp 2023. So PodCamp, the conference I started in, back in 2006 with my friend Chris Brogan is back in Philadelphia in March. So what, you want to check that out as well. That's the news for this week. Lots to, of stuff to go over. Take take these tips, particularly around generative AI and, and large language models. Take them and use them. Use them. Do some cool stuff with them. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you next time.